find that when you think about the ups and downs in life, and I think when you always consider what there is to achieve and what it is that you're trying to achieve, sometimes you can put yourself in a place of forgetfulness of, of life. Like, at the end of the day, life is a gift and sport is a luxury to be able to do it. There's a lot of people going through hard, harsher times than you are. So sometimes when the worst does happen and you find yourself on the other end not being able to do what you want or do things that make you ultimately happy or achieve your goals, you have a moment of reflection and you know in those times where I've had my downs I've still had my family I've still had a good quality of life and I've still had you know reasons to smile each day so you kind of it builds some form of resilience and it actually enables you to live life fearlessly because at the end of the day yes we have targets yes we have goals and if we achieve them amazing you know that's for you to pat yourself on the back with and be proud about but at the end of the day never be scared of failure because if it doesn't happen never be scared of the downs because you're always going to find the way to rise again the fundamental things i would say to maintain happiness and to keep a smile on your face uh, in light of what you do whether it be sport or whether it just be you know a working life or just focusing around fitness it's got to be maintaining that healthy circle um, your family, your friends, you know, your loved ones, but also your, your coaching team, your, your media staff, your, your physios or whoever that might be, just knowing that you're all on the same page. Having clarity um, and having an understanding of what it is that you're trying to, to do with your life and, and the direction that you're going in. If everyone understands where you're going and how they can help supplement you and how they're a part of what it is that your, you know, your team is, and your circle, your inner circle is, then everyone understands their roles and therefore everyone can just enjoy where they are without any crosshairs, any negativity being drained from that. So my morning routine is the total opposite to how people will view me. I'm slow. I'm slow to get out of bed, I'm slow to get moving, I'm slow to, to do anything, literally. I, if I can stay in bed for as long as I possibly can do, I like to sleep. Um, but obviously when the energy comes, it comes strong. <laughs> and that's mainly when I'm doing things that I enjoy. Um, so morning routine is literally just, you know, as I slowly do, I, I get out of bed. Um, obviously I'm in the bathroom and then it's, it's prep. I don't tend to like to eat a lot. Uh, if I'm going to train, uh, if I've got a fast session, I won't necessarily consume a large amount of food. Um, and then off the back of that, you know, I supplement myself. I make a point of doing some affirmations and whatnot, just, just sending out some good vibes and thinking about how I want to attack the day. Half of those things I find that there's no wasted time. So on a drive, as I'm approaching my destination and where I'm going, that's when you know, you start to get into tune into what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Some people need to visualise and do things the night before, um, but I find that quite taxing on myself, energy-wise, and I just like to be present in the moment, uh, switch off, switch on, hence the reason why it takes me a little while to wake up and I, I slowly go about my day. Um, but in terms of the morning, that's where I'm probably my least productive. And I think that's something that we can all do, just not highlighting errors, that's not an error in who I am, that's just who I am. I accept that and I'm aware of that, so when I plan things or when I know that I need to go about my day and there's something that I'm doing that's a morning process, I prepare, I make people aware and that's the best thing you can do. Accept who you are, be aware of your usual antics and your behaviour and just rather than focusing on how to change yourself, uh, focus on how to work with yourself and give yourself an opportunity. You know, when you think about days that you don't want to athlete, that's what I call it, or you don't want to adult, you don't want to athlete, um, it's tough. I think we all have a certain capacity, a certain battery, um, and there are some days where you do hit a wall. I've been doing this since I was um, 13, professionally since I was 16, and I'm 33 now, so we're talking about 20 years of training. There's going to be days where I do just go, oh, as if. Like, you know, I just, I just want to chill out. I want to stay at home. I want to play on my PlayStation. I want to spend more time with my daughter. I, w I, w I want to relax. I want to chill. Um, but what I do find is that you just get moving. Once you start moving, 
is easy once you put yourself in the place to achieve. And that's why one of the biggest things that I did was setting up a home gym because it kept me closer to home. It minimized travel. You work around the things that you find discomfort around or you work around the things that are causing you some form of anxiety or, uh, or, irritability, um, uh, or some form of uh, irrational thought. So if you're finding yourself in a place, ask yourself as to why and see if you can add some solutions to it. So for me, I wanted to spend more time at home. Um, so rather than jumping in a car and driving half an hour, 40 minutes to a track, to a gym, um, if I can supplement some of that at home at a very high level, then that saves me more time that I can have at home. And once I get moving, because it's only on my doorstep, you know, how, what bigger motivation is that? And those factors are things that you really need to consider when you're asking your questions as to why you don't want to do something. You're human and you're allowed to ask that question just find a solution around it rather than going yes or no. I do often get asked, am I too big to sprint? But then I sit there and I went through a phase where I tried to adhere to the norm. I tried to adhere to what people thought, but I managed to come on the scene as a muscular uh, individual athlete. And that's what got me to where I am at a certain point and then you question who you are, you try to change who you are to fit in with other people's ideologies and whatever gift that God has given me and whatever strengths that I have in my genetics and whatever things that I'm able to do, that's me. And I've got to allow myself and accept that that's how I am and to work with my strengths. Don't be scared of your strengths. Uh, I, I have the ability to grow muscle, I have the ability to be very explosive and yeah, I'm, I'm genetically gifted in a certain sense but I've also been able to work with it. So is that a negative? Obviously not. It's just something that you've got to be aware of and work with as opposed to shy away from. Uh, it's easy to sit there and say, well, that person beat you and they're smaller than you. Well, you know, at a certain point, Usain Bolt was six foot eight, what can, or six foot four or five, what can, what can you do about that? I can't grow, so I've got to work with the strengths that I have. Um, and, that's, and that's the medium that you need to stay within. It's so easy to look at others and say, you know, I need to embody that person. Find someone similar to you. Find someone that's got similar traits to you, similar characteristics, similar mindsets, uh, similar physicalities, and then you can ask the question as to how to progress. Um, I've spoken to individuals who are like me, similar to me, and how they you know, dealt with that sort of concept. And that, that's when I started to figure out that I am who I am. And rather than trying to change myself for others to, 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 to adhere to other people's, you know, norms, I'm not normal. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a unique individual. I'm a, I'm a superhuman being. I'm a, I'm a super guy or superman, whatever you want to call it. That's how I see myself. And that's the reason why I just continue to do what I do in the way that I do it. So my top tips to being a good vibes guy, <laughs> as you would say, um, is just not to take yourself too seriously. I think at the end of the day, you've got to leave your ego at home. Um, no matter how you think about whatever it is that you're trying to do in each day and how you attack each day, uh, walking into a room, having to think about how to act, how to behave, just being true to yourself. And if you can, you know, enable yourself to be a little bit more of a magnet to forms of positivity and good vibes. That's the only thing that's gonna come your way. Um, when you are in a room full of people, there's a lot of things that others can offer you in terms of knowledge, uh, support. Uh, so why not tap into it? You know, share your gifts and others might share theirs with you and it's only gonna help you grow and prosper in a different way.